All right, we just got to this place. It was abandoned for like four years. And uh, I'll show you guys the, uh, the stuff we picked up. A big red and a side-by-side. -side. Here's the place. They're burning everything right now. Whoa. Alright, check this thing out. She's a little rough here. So this is a Yerf Dog Scout 4x2. I was hoping it was a 4x4. Does have a dump bed though. Kind of reminds me of the Polaris Big Boss. This is off of it, like that. It's missing the bolt, it goes in here. Has seat belts that don't work. Seats just come right off of it. Let's see here. Thing's been sitting forever. I paid 500 bucks for this thing. And you guys know the story with these. Basically the people that own the house, it flooded. Um, their whole basement was flooded. Uh, I think with like nine feet of water and they just left the house and everything with the house and uh, when the new owners bought the house they uh, asked me if I wanted anything on the property and uh, this was on there along with the Honda three-wheeler and the uh, the boat which is over there so I got a couple cool things from it looks like emergency brake is right here Oh, that's working too. Um, you got your brake and your gas. Oh, it's working. There is a key in it as well. And then you've got your gear selector forward, neutral, and there's reverse on this thing. Looks like at one point it had the windshield on it that broke off. But you can see been sitting outside for a long long time obviously does not run tires aren't too bad look at there's a Pepsi can in there what the heck looks like the whole engines there pretty sure chains a tad rusty Got the dual brakes in the back here. Not much ground clearance right here. But uh, yeah, this is it. So we're gonna try to work a miracle today and get this thing to run. It, uh, it's just really, really rough. Only 75 hours on it. So that's, that gives us hope here. Take a look in there. Ah, it doesn't look horrible. Front bumper is a little janky on here. But I think the first thing we're gonna do is get this all picked up. A bunch of leaves and crap on it. And then we'll vacuum it out and then uh, take the pressure washer See what it looks like after that.
All right, that looks a little bit better. Cleaned up pretty good. Took me about an hour and a half to pressure wash, so. Not too bad. We got this thing in the garage. I think what we're gonna do is get the bed tipped down. There's two settings on this thing, which is kind of nice. You can see one right here, one right here for it. Um, let's try to find the battery. I'm guessing it's underneath this piece of wood. So let's get these chairs off of here. I don't know how that's bolted on. So how is that bolted? All right. How'd they go through the other way over here though? Can that, oh, that can tilt up, sweet. Well, that makes life a little easier. All right, ooh. Look at all those nuts on the gas tank over there. What the heck? <laughs> be nice if I could fit through there. I want to get that piece of wood off there. Just for the time being. You can see all the nuts and stuff in there. Carb is there. Spark plug is there. Oh, there's a big battery back there. So I'm gonna get this vacuumed out, the rest of this, and then we can uh, hook up a jumper to it, see if anything turns on with the key. Is the key on right now? At least the key moves. All right, so surprisingly, I cleaned up pretty good in there. Um, doesn't look like any of the wires are cut by mice either, which is nice. It actually looks pretty clean in there after we cleaned it. So let's get a battery jumper on these two cables. You can see the two red and white going to the positive, the one black going to the negative. Positive. Negative. Let's see if we turn the key, what happens? We got an odd. Ooh, the lights turned on. Look at that. <laughs> Both lights are working. That's cool. Are any of the gauges working? I think there are any gauges that light up, so. Let's see, I'm guessing electric start, you have to put your foot on the brake and turn the key. Before we try to turn this thing over, let's get that spark plug out of here. I don't feel comfortable turning it over with no oil or any lubrication down the cylinder. It's been many, many years this thing's been sitting outside. A smaller plug. Well, the plug looks pretty good. No carbon on it. 
Doesn't look like the cylinder saw any water on the inside, so that's good. I'm gonna spray some penetrating oil down there and then get a little oil down the cylinder. It's hard to see where the spur plug hole is. I think we have to push down the brake and turn the key. Let's see here. Get your battery jumper back on. See if electric starts can work. Here we go. <laughs> she turns over. Seems kind of slow, but it does turn over. All right. Do we have spark? Hopefully we do. Otherwise, this could be a project ending pretty early. Kind of hard to see that far, but oh yeah. You can even see it from here. Haha. <laughs> we have spark. That is awesome. Let's do a quick compression test, confirm compressions there. Compression gauge in here. It's gonna be kind of tough to fish in there. Let's see if we can do it. All right, here's the gauge. We're looking for over 100. PSI on this thing, so hopefully we can hit that. Here we go. Throttle open. Let's see what we get. Oh, good compression. 172. That should suffice. All right, we forgot to check the air filter before uh, turning the engine over, so hopefully we didn't suck anything in through the carb from the air filter. I'm hoping that was a sealed system, but looking at it, there might be a little passageway for mice to get through. Well, that's what was in the air filter. And uh, if you look in there, you can see it's pretty bad. <laughs> so hopefully, I'm really hoping I didn't suck something in. Oh, it's not good. All right, good news. This was a sealed system and nothing got by the actual air filter. So we were good to go there. I was happy to see that. And there's a screen in there as well. So no big chunks could get past there. We're just going to rip off this little foam filter thing and clean this off and reinstall that. But everything else looks good. I got the whole air filter housing cleaned out, you can see. So it's just butted up against this right here. So nothing could get in there, which was really great. So we didn't harm the engine at all. Let's take a look at the gas tank here. Let's see what's going on in there. Ooh. The gas looks a little rough in there. Pretty dark. Not much in there, so that's good. We can just siphon that out. All right, let's try to get this carburetor out of here. Two clamps, either side.
All right, carb is out. All right, let's see if there's any gas in here. Doesn't appear to be. Let's see what this looks like on the inside. Holy. Those screws are on there. I'm gonna strip them out. Oh man, that was on there. At least there's only three of them. I got two of them. Four more. Oh man. All right, we got that last one out. Yeah, she's a little rough in there. Oh boy. Bunch of old gas in there. Yeah, definitely needed a carb clean. It's really bad. Yikes. All right, let's take a look at the carb here. Needle stuck. It's not moving. I don't want to break it off either. If I can get this pin out. Float seems good. Needle is completely stuck in there. That's crazy. Let's see if I can grab that out of here. I'm gonna break that off. We'll just take that off for now, that little spring. Jeez. There we go. Ah, packed full. That seat needs to be cleaned out. It's really, really bad. Superman Jones. Oh, jeez. That, uh, a little crusty. This has to be clogged too. 
Oh yeah, that's a tiny pilot. That is definitely clogged. That little hole right there is clogged. There's a fuel screw right on the side right here. One, but one and a half turns out on the fuel screw. Spring in there. That's pretty much it. She's uh, a little crusty, but uh, she cleaned up pretty good. Let's get that cleaned up with some brake cleaner, compressed air, and I'll throw this back on there. See if she fires up. All right, let's siphon out this old gas here. Hopefully, the fuel pump actually works. Not much in there. Oh man, that's really yellow. Gas tank is all cleaned out in there, you can see. That looks pretty good. All right, with a little finessing, we got the carburetor back in, and uh, it's all good to go. So, let's get some gas on the gas tank right here. Attempt to fire this thing up. Let's see if we get any gas coming out of this line when we turn it over. All right, the pump is actually working. Gas is getting to the carb, so let's attempt to start this thing up. See what happens here. Choke it. Here we go.
Stop if you can get us. So our gas pump stopped working. Now it's not shooting out, you can see. Gas lines right here. We turn the machine on and crank it over. No gas coming out. Maybe we just need to prime it again. Looks like the tube that goes down from here is stuck down in the tank and it's broken off. So that's why it's not grabbing any fuel. So let's get this guy off of here and then try to fish out that that line or add or add a new line. Alright, finally got this loose here. And you can see the hose is just broken off of it. So the other half of the hose is in the tank. All right, new hose on here. Let's see if that fits. Oh yeah. All right, it's officially running without the choke. We can let this thing warm up for a little bit. But it looks like we got the, uh, the pump issue fixed. Sounds pretty good, pretty quiet. See if we can wrap it up a little bit. stopped again for some reason something's not working here all right so I cleared out all the lines made sure they all blow through and uh, that didn't fix the problem so I'm thinking it's the actual pump here 
Um, so we might have to take apart the pump and just check out those gaskets in there. I think there's a diaphragm in there. It might be hardened up. All right, so here's the pump. Guessing there's just diaphragms in there that are bad. Gotta be careful not to rip any gaskets here. All right, we got that off. Plastic covering on it. So that's going in, that's coming in. So gas is going into there. That must be the diaphragm right here. Hmm. Feels pretty flexible still. Let's see. I don't know. Because I think that was the diaphragm. Alright, so we got the one side off, and then I just got the other side off. Here's the other diaphragm right here. Not sure if that's hardened up or not. It doesn't feel like it. it. Just feels like it's a thin plastic sheet. And that one right there, and it goes like that. So I'm not really sure what's wrong with it. I just cleaned it out a little bit. It had a couple pieces of crud in there, but nothing too serious. And when you put gas down it, it just flows through like nothing. I don't know what's going on with it. So it must pump it into this one. Pump it through, then pump it in back through this one. That's what I'm thinking. So we'll, we'll put it back together. And uh, we'll clean off these pieces of film here. See it's a little bit rusty on there. off a little bit all right we got the valve cover off here um, I was just thinking maybe it wasn't pumping fuel because it wasn't getting enough vacuum and um, the valves were a little bit tight the intake was 0 0.003 the exhaust was 0 0.002 so we set those back to 0 0.005 here's the valve cover right here it was just four bolts holding that on so we'll put that back together See what happens. But uh, this pump still isn't working. I threw on a different pump right here from a snowmobile that was working, but it was pumping too much gas into the carb and flooding it out. So I think it's just our pump that's not working properly. Um, we might take the carb back out and look at that because something seems a little bit weird. All right, just checking for rips in the diaphragm here. And uh, everything looks good. No rips, no tears. Needle looks good. So we can put that back. Everything looks good in the carb. Running pretty good now.
Well, we got the seats on. Those are all bolted down. Um, we got a temporary gas tank hooked up, gravity feeding, because that uh, fuel pump stopped working. We're just gonna see if this thing moves now. Well, we got it running and driving after it sat for probably like 20 years outside and just got rained on, snowed on, and it was crusty. It was so bad. <laughs> One of the worst machines I've worked on for sure. But we got it up and going. It, uh, it runs good, um, not the best, but it runs decent. The gas was leaking out of the gas tank and out of the fuel line, and then the battery, um, lost its charge, so I decided to end the video here because I'm gonna wait for the fuel pump and uh, that way it will be fixed correctly. Um, everything else on it was going pretty good. It has good power when it does run right and then um, reverse work, forward work, and everything was working. The dump bed works perfect. Um, it's got nice beefy tires on it yet. Lots of tread left on the tires. Like I said before, it only has 75 hours on it, so I think there's a lot of life left in the engine. Um, the oil checked out, that was pretty clear. It almost looks like the guy did an oil change before he let it sit. Yeah, it's just a little rough, but uh, it's a lot better than when we first got it. <laughs> Way better. So thanks for watching guys, thanks for subscribing. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time, we are out.